Welcome to Ace MTG, and tomorrow marks my six month anniversary on YouTube. And this has been so much more than I could have expected. The community is absolutely fantastic. You're all great. Every single person who subbed, those of you who just watch my videos, like the videos, I appreciate it so much. I would have never imagined I was to be so close to 1,500 subs after only six months. And I hope this is just the beginning of some big things to come. So stay tuned, and hopefully, I'm gonna keep growing and I'm gonna keep getting better for all of you. I love all your suggestions always. I always take them into mind, and I'm always trying to do the best I can on here and I'm always open to any feedback though good or bad I absolutely love it so once again thank you to everybody out there it's been a great amazing journey and I hope this is just the beginning so let's go ahead and go into today's deck which is the Simic artifact deck that's been floating around the internet quite a bit because Ash Lizzle absolutely popped off with this I don't know she was 30 and 0 or even higher than that with this and that was in best of three so my whole idea was I want to turn this into best of one and I've been kind of playing with it and mixing and matching with it and then of course right when I'm ready to do the deck, she comes out with another version meant for best of one. So I'm gonna talk about mine and a, cute, a few key things when I build a deck. So typically the deck I show you is not 100% just what I consider to be the best version. I usually have about two cards I'm kind of playing with. And the two cards I'm definitely playing with here is going to be the Explorer's Cache. The idea is you're like, okay, well yeah, it's an artifact. It fits in with the theme. I could bounce some counters around, which is nice. But the real reason this is here is if you drop this, this is now have two counters on it and then you drop your glyph onto that, you have now made a seven, six creature on turn three. So that's kind of the idea behind it. I want to test it out. Now what Ash Lizzle did is she had witness protection and this deck has no removal. So realistically, this is probably the better option, right? If you have a monstrous threat, you just have to get around. It doesn't completely get rid of them, but at least it turns into a one, one. So that's probably better. She also does one haywire might in her deck, because if you're going to exile with your cauldron, you have the potential. Maybe they have a temporary lockdown. This is going to be a lot more if you're dealing with things like control to actually be able to handle it. So for me, I might get rid of my Explorer's Cache. And the other card I'm testing out here is our Archivist, which I just think so many artifacts, every single turn almost, you're getting artifact into play. So this thing can scale and grow quite high. And I know in some of my testing I've done with it, I've been often able to get this thing to an eight, nine, and it grows fairly large pretty quick. And a lot of times this is gonna be a huge win condition for me. So I liked the two copies of it, but you might just find you need a little bit more removal. If we're constantly going against Mono Red and we're not able to win those matches, that might be something we need to put in here. So typically a deck, my first couple games, it's the first time I've ever played it. I've played versions of this just slightly different and things like that. I'm not all that experienced. I'm talking maybe two, three games with it. So you pretty much are seeing my very first games with this deck. So the whole idea here is we want to focus a little bit on our unblockable creatures, your ginger brute, your surge engine. Then you have things like your soul cauldron where you could get those out of the graveyard and you can attach it to any one of your other creatures. Then of course, this is artifacts. So everything we're dealing with, either our siren is producing artifacts or everything is an artifact, or it's something like our wormlet and our archivist that are gonna grow every single turn by us playing those artifacts. And then a gigantic one is the schooner. The ability here, number one, an artifact. Crew for one, everything could crew this. And then we're going to actually get to explore on the creature that occurred it every time this thing attacks in. Now, eventually late in the game, yes, this thing's not gonna really be able to get in, but now maybe we've made our flying creature huge. We've made our unblockables quite large from constantly crewing it. Or by this time, our teeling worm or our archivists are so big, we could swing in and we have no worry about them blocking with any of their creatures. The Sentinel, same kind of idea, okay, is kind of the boat. So a three, four, just like the boat is, but now we're getting those map tokens, which we're gonna then be able to use those to be able to explore. And again, we wanna grow our flyers and our unblockable creatures to get everything huge to get through with the final points of damage. Now I did put in, cause she also did as well, two copies of the rest of vine stock. This is something I'm a little hesitant about though. I don't love playing anything off curve with this deck. Really, you want three mana with it and you don't want a single one of those coming in tapped. So if you're starting to deal with more control, more mid range, things like that, of course you want those creature lands. But what I've been facing so far in Mythic ever since we've got Lost Caverns of Ixalan is nothing but creatures. Literally over 200 games and I'm at less than 5% that I've played against any type of domain or control style deck. So because that is so infrequently that I'm going against that, I just think at least for now, for the current meta you take it out. Then when the ladder resets, sure, we're gonna have to reassess, we're gonna have to readjust, see what's actually out there. But you really have to be curtailing your deck to what you actually see. And then two Merricks, I'm absolutely fine with that. I believe she probably go 
goes with three. But if you have that turn one, right, you can still play any of your creatures. Or if you do it as a two drop, you could play anything you need as well. The only thing you hate is after that. If let's say you're stuck with one island and you have one Merrix. And then on turn two, you need to actually play one of your green creatures, but you've already used your Merrix. That's when we could run into some problems. But I do think it's good enough because it's going to produce an artifact creature. So when we start flooding a little bit, that's just another way to start bumping and pumping up our squad when we need to. And it's another thing that you could also use to cur crew your schooner. So those are some ones I really love. Now in her best of three, she also was going to disruption protocol, which I totally agree with that. If you're going with best of three, or if our meta starts to change, we're gonna need to deal with sweepers, right? A sunfall is gonna be a bit of a nightmare for this deck. Hopefully we still have a schooner on board and things like that. But for the most part, we definitely want that backup and have that counter spell. So to me, I think you have about four cards in this deck that you could kind of play with. And for me, what I would take out is I would take out my cachet and I would take out the archivist and I would leave everything else exactly the same. And then you're either going, you're deciding on more removal or if you're worried about those sweepers and our meta starts to change, I would go with the disruption protocol. But the base of this deck I think is good. And I think you only have about four cards really to mess with. And I said at the very top, the Explorer's Cache is here because I want to try this little combo. One of you put in the comments and told me about this. I didn't even know about it, right? It makes sense though. It comes with two counters and then it's an artifact. Boom, we have a 7-6, absolute beast of a body coming through on turn three. So that's why I wanted to at least try that out and see how well that works. So make sure you stay to the very end of this video and that's what will let you know what Jiu Jitsu Belt this deck deserves and kind of my final thoughts and what I think about it. I don't think I'll talk all that much about changes though because we've talked a lot about the deck so far. So let's go ahead and jump into some gameplay. Thank you so much to all my Ace MVPs for really showing me consistent support and to all you Nerd Assassins out there who always are constantly liking these videos, giving me those watch hours, and giving me comments. I appreciate all of you and I absolutely love this community that we've built. I hope we just keep growing from here. So once again, thank you to everybody out there. Up against Tom Jones over here. All right, going first. Oh man. Um. Yeah, I like this. So we have a bit of our tester card in this one as well. I think I'm just going to go flyer and then... If they don't drop right, we're going to get three points of damage in here. Okay, so humans. Oh, okay. They're not going to want to trade there. That's a for sure. So we're just going to fully swing in. And then next turn, right, we get our 3-4 down. And then not our favorite card here in the world, right? We have this for our Glyph to get a 7-6 going. All right, they're going to be getting lots of life, though. Still going to swing all in here. They're right back up to 20. It is going to be hard to crack that. Oh, man. You know what? I think this growing might just be a little bit better. All right, so let's go right here, drop this down, auto pay, take the pain. To grow, and now let's swing in. Again, I don't, I don't foresee them doing any of these trades right now, so just free damage. We're gonna take all the damage on the crack back though, because our wormlet's gonna keep on growing. Okay, so Boros. The, okay. It's a lot of damage though. We're about to have a really good blocker. So no blocks. That, oh man. I don't think we can afford it though, can we yet? We get this down, no artifact. Okay, yeah, we'll just do this. Put another counter right there, because again, I don't think they're gonna actually trade. So just keep swinging in, try and do as much damage to them. We're trying to do a bit of a race while they're gaining the life. Because now we have a great blocker, they're gonna have to have their Brutakathar here. And if they do, then yeah, we're gonna take another big hit. Okay, get lost. We get the counter right back though. I am surprised that was their target. All right, so no attacks from them. Problem is with two recruitment officers, they're now gonna be, what? 
Um, okay, I'll, I'll, all day I'll do this. Yeah, let's do that. We dropped to 11 now. All right, let's go right here. Start putting our counters on. Another land. Schooner. I like a schooner. We'll keep a schooner. And let's... Do I throw another? Yeah, they can't even kill this then. So we swing in like this. We're now going to grow. So a great blocker for the Vanguard. We're going to grow it again next turn before we attack. Have a good... Ooh, ooh, okay. Things just got interesting now. It's a good 5-5. Five, five. That means we're going to have to go to the air, I think. We're just going to have to pump our Siren up as much as possible. And into... Okay, here we go. Probably a little mistake I was making then. All right, so let's start pumping. Schooner, don't need. Oh, actually, that was a mistake. I keep it on top. I would have had lethal right there. Oh, shoot. I actually blew lethal. Not needed. So I'm not actually going to get the schooner down. It's only six. Yeah, that was a big mistake. Shoot, I had lethal and I totally miss it. Okay. Do I even bother right here? All we're gonna choose trade with that. But that will grow. I think it's worth it. Right, we're gonna get our counters back. I actually would rather shrink their vanguard. Yeah, let's just shrink the Vanguard. Oh, really mad at myself though for, for missing lethal on that one. So we only got one counter. Um, let's spread these out a little bit. Let's put another one here potentially. All right, land and then... Let's throw one more counter here. Just make sure they're not gonna be able to get through. So they got a gang life right now. So that's one gets them to two. They have the flyer. Once again, probably should have put my counters on. Okay. They, they weren't able to gain any more life. So it, the unblockable was gonna be able to get through right there. Definitely did not play that one the best. Game one with it, right? Gotta get your feelers out there and start learning the deck a little bit. But we definitely miss lethal, right? We have to sit there, pump up our flyers, pump up our unblockable things. So we'll know that for next time. Hopefully we'll play this a little bit smoother. So even though this didn't get to play how I wanted, right? I want this to turn into a seven six. It still worked out pretty nice being able to pass those counters around and all our creatures get get counters at some point. So when they die, it builds it back up again. So I, I was liking the play with that. All right, so that very much was a game one with a, a brand new deck here. So hopefully we'll, we'll fix a few of these problems. Um, I, li I still like Siren turn one, right? We'll go Schooner turn two. Because we really want to crew it with our uh, Siren and just start getting the bumps on that. All right. We'll see what Gruel version we're up against. All right, here we go. And then go Schooner. And the next turn, we'll be able to double drop. So next turn, I think it's going to be another Schooner and a Ginger Brute. Let's see what they're able to put out here. We're just hoping to not see the Picnic Ruin. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. All right, that, that changes things. So it's going to be Wormlet.
schooner. Yes, we're going to tap that way. Ooh, yes, that is good. Okay, so next turn, we could go our cachet into Ginger Brute, and then the turn after that, we turn it into a 7-6. All right, so end step. The thing is, they are about to come through with some serious damage, right? You know you're gonna see a Monstrous Rage, Giant Growth, probably Audacity. Okay. Yes. Do you have the Monstrous Rage, though, to give it the Trample as well? We're gonna throw it and see if they have the trample ability. We're ho okay, good. We wanted to just save the 10 damage there. Because if we're able to use chump blockers, we're gonna use this all day long. We just can't afford for a giant one of those to get through on us. And that, I have to say, I think that was really lucky. They had no trample right there. I would still expect something like a, a giant growth in their hand. But as long as we could avoid the audacity and monstrous rage, we're, we're pretty happy. Second one. Okay. Do I go in with the schooner? I think I do. So crew, we'll put one counter on the schooner. Okay, land. All right, so next turn we have the glyph to come down. Okay. End step right there. So we have to try and block with our ginger brute. And the thing is, I don't think they're going to both give them. Okay, Swift Spear. See what else they have. Kamano. Okay, we're totally fine with that. We still have a good chump blocker. So unless we see... Oh, shoot. Another land. Okay, that, that does change things a little bit. Yep. <gasps> what? Really? I think we go here. I think we attempt the block. Yeah, let's attempt the block. Okay, good. We're happy with the trade right there. No problem. We're still at 21 life right now. Oh, shoot. That sucks. Okay, okay. Oh, nice. Exiled it, though, so we lose our... That's six damage. They're going to have to start chumping. Two, three, four. Okay. It's another land. Um, I want to be able to crew that. I can't even block, so I think we might as well just attack. I don't think they can have lethal on the crack back. That's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. If they get a pump spell, they're going to get us. But I think we just have to put the pressure on now. Do I crew the schooner? I think I do. Yeah. Let's just get in for even more. Wormlet. I don't think that's best. Okay, they just throw some chumpers in our way, which we love. So we're going to take an absolutely huge hit right now. Hit me, drop me to 20, and they have 12 right now. So if you get a pump spell, that's just going to be game over. 
Definitely played it risky by leaving nobody behind right now. Okay, just hit me for 10. If we draw artifact off the top here, we're good to go and we're gonna win this game. So if I get something like my siren, I get another, well, no, I guess I can't get another, well, hold on. I can just attack, make that larger and attack that way. No, cause I, have, I need something to crew the schooner. All right, that's right, that's right. All right, this will do it right here. All right, so tough cookie. Activate there. I mean, that's just lethal, but let's just bring in the schooner as well, just to make sure. So you only got one blocker right now. Ooh, look at this. Oh, oops, that's right. The food can't attack yet. It just came into play. Ooh, that, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. That's okay. I think, uh, no, we're gonna get him to one. Shoot. Yeah, we, we definitely uh, made a boo-boo there. End turn. So now if they have trample, they are gonna be able to get the victory. Wouldn't be a pause if they didn't have something too. And the terrible thing too is when this Kamano flips and I block, I'm not gonna be able to discover three right now. All right, yeah, that was a huge, huge mistake we just made. Man, that's two games in a row now. I've definitely made an error. All right, we block. We got to put at least four in front of this. So that's six, eight right now. Any pump spell, game over. Well, they have to get trample first. Oh, wow, we're gonna be able to do it. Oh wait, no, we do get it. You do still get with the glyph. That was a total misspeak on my part. Okay, because the creature will immediately get exiled, the enchantment part though still will drop off to the graveyard. So we'll still get to discover three off of that. Oof. That was a risky matchup. And realistically, we got lucky on that one. The fact they didn't draw any trample for this thing. So we'll, we'll take that victory, but that one was a sketchy game right there. Again, that's two games though. I did not play my best. You could see the power definitely with this deck, right? So, and I, I say it over and over. If, if you're able to play a deck 15, 20 times and plus, you really start to learn the ins and outs. Unfortunately, you're seeing game one and two with me with the deck, even so, I, I should be a better player than this. I shouldn't be making these little mistakes I am. So hopefully I'm gonna start cleaning this up now. Okay, going first. Gotta, gotta go tap land here, unfortunately. And this is where the creature land starts to hurt us. All right. So the next turn, we at least go Wormlet into Ginger Brute. Ooh, we got dinos. I have not seen dinos in a little bit. You know what's, uh, no, this is just better. Yeah, Wormlet, grow the Wormlet. Next turn, we could go, yeah, I like that. No chance they're blocking, we'll swing in. They wanna start ramping up to their big boys. So I'm gonna need to start getting a flying attack going. So next turn, we have a double drop. We're gonna grow both of our creatures, okay. Go right here. Grow the squad. I think I'm just gonna attack in. If they if they want to block, I'm totally fine with that. All right, so they're still missing red, but the fact they have this right, they could still tap for all their red dinos. And next turn now, now we're gonna have a five four unblockable to start coming in. All right. But we're going to, yeah, we're going to need to start finding. Hey, let's go unblockable. Hit him for five. And now we got the schooner next turn. We're going to be able to bump this up a little bit more. And in fact, hold on. Uh, what do we need for that? Okay, we need more lands. So I could hit him for six. We are putting him on a bit of a claw. Oh, nice. Shoot, there goes the glyph. I mean, good, there goes the ginger brew. 
And then the glyph will at least get to discover three. Let's see what we could find. Another ginger brute. Yeah, we take four for that. That hurts. But now we at least have a blocker. So they would have attacked and we would have taken four anyway. This way now at least it saves us. All right, here we go. So we're not going to be able to attack by doing this. Is it better just start getting damage in? Yeah, this will just be the turn we play quite a bit. All right, next. So a 6-7, nice big body right now. They could double... No, wait. Shoot, I should have attacked. They didn't have it there, right? Okay. Right now, this is just a low-to-the-ground dino deck. It's not too big against me. All right, here we go. I've been curious to see how this is going to play in this deck. And we want to get this over here on a Ginger Brute. Yeah, we'll take another. And then let's make each of these unblockable. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Haste. Can't be blocked except for creatures with haste. Oops, 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 oops. My bad. All right, let's... Okay, if that's the case, then... Let's go ahead and get in with our schooner. See, that's going to have nine. All right, now we're going to start scaling awful nice, right? We're going to trade with any of those creatures, which we're fine with. Because we have another one to replace it. That Ginger Brute now is out of the way. Okay. Uh, view Battlefield. What do we want to do? What's better? Just because that could get such a big bump and hit me for some damage, I think I'll kill that way. I know this now will be able to block, but... And let's go right here. All right, so now we're sitting with a 5-6, an 8-9, which is about to become a 10-11. So we're going to scale here above the dinos. They do have a creature land. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Still can't activate that. Oh, no, you can't activate that. Okay. So you do have a 3-4. All right, let's get this down. Just keep putting it here. Schooner. I'll take it. Make this unblockable. Boy, we are just... I mean, this whole thing is just going together right now. Now witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational battle station oh yeah schooner 12 so that's three seven ten. yeah they have to basically block everybody with that all right so unblockable we're just coming in Sticks from their land, I believe. Thing is, we get one more land too. We're gonna start being able to grow a little bit of everything. Uh, do we even wanna send him in? Not necessarily, we just kill two creatures. And that's gonna keep growing, so. Ah, forget it, send them. Send them, make them do some blocks. They don't have great blocks here anyway, right? We just start taking out their creatures. We're still getting in for four turn. It's 
It's gonna be really hard for them to attack back at us too. Cause at least we have the schooner no matter what we get to crew. Okay, chump lock, that's an easy one. Archivist really played a role this game. I mean, look how big it was able to scale. Our conductor too, pretty nice with how, how much map and... Okay, okay, wait, who, who's blocking who? Six, seven, okay, so I just take care of both. Who's blocking, who's blocking? This time we will get rid of that dino. All right, because now we'll be able to hit, uh, that's gonna drop him to six and that's just six damage. They have to have a hate creature right now or the game is just over. And we'll throw one more on it. Yep, we'll take it. End turn, right? <laughs> Get another ability here. Oh, gives yourself some, everybody has haste now. That means you can now block my creatures. Wow, what a good top deck that was. That was nice. Okay. Thank you, that's a freebie right there. All right, my turn. They have three blockers. That does have haste, that doesn't have haste. So those two would have to block them. I have the mana, so I'm just gonna use it. Right, they'll, they'll still be able to block, but I'll be able to trade with everybody. Okay. Swing it in. Uh, Siren, no, we don't need that. Yep, yeah, that's the easy chump. They're gonna take three. And then you have to block there. And now you no longer have haste, so now I'll still have an unblockable creature here. Plus you need to basically, you have to find another hatcher right off the top. Otherwise we're just getting in for the game. Okay, big old dino. GG's, that was a fun one. I haven't seen uh, gruel dinosaurs on the mythic ladder for about a week now, so I'm happy to see them and get the win. So nice easy three and oh, I think we cleaned up our play a little bit on that one. We kept putting the pressure on them. We could have held off and probably just won a little bit easier, but I mean, let's just take the victories where we can. All right, up again, super good Corey. Let's see how super good he is. Um, a shame on this one. Again, I think I would just get rid of these tap lands. Not a fan, because this deck, how often are we getting to six lands anyway? I think it's really better for the best of three meta, where you're gonna maybe see more domain, more control, slower style decks out there. We'll keep it, shouldn't affect us too much. We got the Siren, and then we'll drop Siren in a tap land, and then Sentinel into our Glyph. I think that works for us. If we really draw a bomb for turn two, we could always go Besaju turn two. All right, Mono Red, this will be a test and it's Mono Red when we're on the draw and we don't necessarily have our fastest hand in the world. I think our Glyph might be our best bet. Okay, wow. Yeah, we're gonna chump right here. We're just gonna save some life. And taking care of the Besaju is tempting. Or do we just chump again? Yeah, I think we'll just chump again. I think I like Glyph on turn three, because then when we play the Sentinel, we still have the option. Okay, okay. 
That's three. You would like to prevent three, but I don't really want them searching for a card. Yeah, so we'll just go right here and just take the five. All right. Huge thing about this now is at least we could block any other creatures, so no attack. And if it does die, if they are able to Monstrous Rage over the top, then at least I'm going to be able to get something out of my deck. Holy cow. What a dream curve for them. What a dream curve. I think I have to just kill this now. No, let's take our time. Oh, jeez. It's 11 we're taking. Tough cookie gain three to five. We block two things and that's already four. Uh, all right, more creatures out. At least we have a flying blocker, but I mean, one burn spell, lightning strike, go for the, I mean, lightning strike or uh, play with fire. Monstrous rage, that'll do it too. Oh, wait, we're at two. Attack all, <laughs> doesn't even matter, right? All right, GG's. Yeah, that was a bad one. They just put the absolute beat down on us. And I mean, that, that'll happen though. You play against Mono Red, they get to play first and they have a good curve like that. No matter what you're working with, sometimes it's just gonna be difficult. I always hate that to be my first loss though with the deck. Just an absolute no game loss on that last one. Um, I'm gonna try this. I mean, right, we don't have the green mana, so it looks a little risky. No one drops. I'm really excited though to try and go schooner and I want our surge engine. I want to see if this thing could pop off for us. All right, here we go. No wormlets on turn one though. I've been able to play the wormlet, but I haven't been able to drop it. Oh, okay, mono red again. We get our rematch. Don't know if we're better suited for it. Uh, yeah, we want the schooner. And then we could drop the surge engine and pay the one mana for it. Okay, okay, no Rakdos. Play it down, we go here. I think, I think that's just a little better, okay. And then we're gonna, we want our surge engine to get bigger. Draws the land. Okay, we get the green. This is gonna be really nice now. We'll be able to double drop next turn. Surge engine still won't be able to attack in though. Yep, taking the two. Right now, if go for the throat is the removal. We are safe there. Have to worry about the cut down. Those are their only instant. Okay, they're tapping. Oh, nice. Okay, we got we have a replacement. I really want to do the seven six thing. I really, really do. So we're gonna, let's go like this. Oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> that's right, I only have one green. All right, I had the whole plan, that's fine, that's fine. If we get a land, oh, we'll be able to do it. All right, now, again, I do want the surge engine. Uh, Ginger Brute, no, we're actually looking for a land. Right, if we don't find a land, I think we just glyph on Ginger Brute and then make this so this could actually attack. Oh, nice. Love it. Can't wait to see what they have here. All right, so my turn. Don't hit. We don't hit. I think this is, we, we have to bump this up. So it's not the most mana efficient play here.
All right, so make it so this thing can attack. We're going to crew. All right, so these are all lethal now to that, and they have to block something or they're just dead. So we swing in. Gets another land. Oh, and the next turn we're about to pop off. Yeah, has to block. Easy decision where we're taking this. Is that this could kill us literally in one turn. All right. All right, so now we get this down. Do I even want to spread the counter out? I'm going to say no. I just want a full force 7-6 coming in. Let me do it. Okay. I am curious then, are they just a anvil deck? I mean, it looks like it with Ojir. Come on, be a sport. Let me do it. Okay, that's nice. They're hanging in here. All right, we get the counters. Oh, man. That's right. This is just going to be gigantic. And then this... Okay, another one. All right, all right. Play the land. Wait, wait. Right here. Throw the counter on. Right here. Oh, look at this monster. I have you now. Oh, yes. Right. Got to do a double jump right here. All right. End turn. We should be safe now. I mean, there's no sweeper they're gonna have. You have a burn down the house, does five to everything. But what are you doing right now with an eight, seven? Oh, this was so sweet. Oh, so satisfying right there. All right, I, I respect it, right? Hit me for the two. Oh, wait, what? Seven or a creature draw, okay. All you got is two red mana here. GG's, whew, that was a fun one. We got to really do our thing on that. And just so many different angles this deck could kind of start hitting him from, right? I mean, the, I don't think this is necessarily the best card, but being able to distribute those counters between our cards and how many unblockable things we have, I think it does come into play nicely and then be able to put the glyph on it and make this thing, in this case, an eight, seven, Typically, it's going to make this thing, what, a 7-6? I think that's just huge. It's so hard for them to have to be able to handle that. And it's an artifact. So, I mean, just not an easy kill. On the draw, let's see what we're up against. We'll be able to hold out. Oh, black. Black should actually be pretty tough. All right, I didn't see any stick, so maybe no cut down. I want the schooner to start kicking off as soon as possible. So we'll swing in just for one. All right, next turn I'm thinking Tough Cookie and Siren. Let's see if this is just a straight mono black. Lily, all right. That's fine. We're still going to be able to hit this. Yep. One of your friends has to leave. All right, let's go right here. Siren. Tough cookie. And then we'll be able to get our soul cauldron as well. Let's take care of Lily when you can. Do you, you don't love it, right? You don't need to hit it that bad, and we have so much land, we don't necessarily have to worry. So next turn, we get to double drop again. We could also start just activating all this stuff. 
Sheldred. All right, that's a that's a little beast. All right, we draw. Even better. Resolve. Let's get Mirix. And I guess we just hit him for one in the air. We're gonna gang it right back though. This Sheldred is gonna be difficult for us to start getting through. I think... I think Surge Engine we try and... Uh, Surge Engine could get so big though. <gasps> no. How dare you take my Soul Cauldron? No. All right, all right. Um... And they're emptying my graveyard too. Shoot, that was nice. All right, my turn. We draw, we draw into a land. A glyph, oh yes, that works. Play our land. So we have three life we can gang there. All right. Hit him for five. So next turn, I could activate this, make this a base five, four. Plus we get the glyph down. We're gonna draw a card off. Oh shoot, we didn't play anything. Okay, that's trouble. Um. We'll chump there. We're happy with that. Oh, oh man. Oh man. Okay. Well, that's that's gonna do it for us right there. Yeah. Boy, that was devastating. I think we actually had the smallest chance of coming back if that didn't happen. I mean, we're about to drop to two. Yeah, so we're, we're just dead. All right, and we pass. Yeah, they got us on this one, darn. Man, if it wasn't for the Gix's command, I mean, we actually stood a small chance here. I mean, they don't even have to attack, just let it be my turn, game over. GG's. so funny it's the past couple days too and especially because i feel like it's such a creature meta right now every time i've gone against mono black or some type of rakdos with lots of kill spells things like that those are the ones that are just absolutely crushing me right now welcome back so this deck ended up going four and two which is decent right 66 percent win rate that's not a very large sample size but i have to say it's definitely my style deck i had a lot of fun with it i really liked it and i found there's lots of ins and outs of it and lots of just fun things to do so even though maybe it's not the best record i've had or i obviously did not match what ash slizzle was able to do with it i think this deck is a whole lot of fun and i personally enjoy it so i know in my free time this is probably one i'm going to be hammering the ladder quite a bit with just because i enjoyed it so much now it's as far as the current meta goes, I probably would keep this exactly the same. I could not believe how much the Explorer's Cache really was nice. I loved bouncing those counters around. Plus, we just got so many counters on our creatures from all the exploring that this then, when our creature died, would get those counters and then I would spread them out even more. So I really love that fact with this. And the Elvish Archivist, it grew so big so often, gave me that nice blocker. Now, when the meta does change, again, if I feel like when the ladder resets, I probably will 
will drop these for and I'll put in the description protocol because I won't know really what's out there and I am afraid of Sunfall. I am afraid of sweepers. But when I'm dealing with less than 5% of games that have to deal with that, you have to forget about it. You want to curtail your deck to what you're actually facing out there in the meta. And if I'm mostly facing creatures and other aggro style decks, then yeah, I just want to be able to handle them best I possibly can. Now, that then would lean you a little bit towards witness protection, but I really kind of liked my all in here. I was just like, I'm gonna do my thing, you do your thing, let's see who does it better. And for the most part, we were coming out on top. So I had a lot of fun with it, but I think if you wanna make it a little bit more competitive, like I said, either add the counters or add in the Haywire protection, but absolutely a fun deck. As far as what Jitsu Belt I would give it, I'm gonna have to give it a purple belt. I just see it having still lots of problems, right? We of course are gonna have a potential problem with any type of control domain. And then Mono Red could still run us over. They're on the play and they just go a little too fast. Maybe our creatures haven't had the time to scale. Maybe I don't draw any of my lifelink and any of my food tokens and things like that. So I just think there's lots of other decks out there that could potentially give this thing a problem. I also played it a little bit after I was done kind of recording my videos. I ended up winning both those games, but one of them was this 15 minute slugfest against Mono White. And so I barely inched through that one, but that tells me right then and there as well. Mono White is of course going to be a problem and gonna be a very difficult deck as well. So yes, even though it can beat those top tier decks, I think this thing is still a bit of a work in progress. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic, right? She's proved herself. Astral got herself in the top 30 with this deck. She won many games with it, but I still think even her would say in best of one, she's kind of mixing and matching and she would change it based on what she's actually seen. But I love this thing. As far as the fun factor, I mean, off the charts. I'm so glad that she kind of introduced this one because this is a brand new deck. We now have so many different good artifact decks and lots of different colors. And this one is one of my absolute favorites to play. So I was really hyped for it. I hope you really enjoyed this video as well. And of course, go check out all her videos. I think she's got two or three different ones all about this deck. One on the official Magic channel, a couple on her own channel so you'll get to see lots of gameplays with it if this is a deck that you're interested in and the other thing i forgot to mention i said in my intro but i think i would take out my creature lands it did come into some factor once but at least for right now okay until i'm starting to go against more control i just would rather just go on curve so i just probably do an equal balance one forest one island and just go with that because yes it could come into play especially in your longer games but i think by going just curving out and getting your mana in the proper suit sequence is just a little bit more important. So make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow's video. And remember, that is my big six months on YouTube. So please, in the comments, give a congratulations, a glad to have you around, a happy anniversary, a something for me. And until next time, never forget, you're an ace.